All right, first you take one of those, and then you buy these guys, and you weld them on there. You leave the point exposed. It's a pretty badass setup, pretty tough. Then you make your bar. Pardon the welds and all that, we haven't cleaned it up yet, but you got three slots here in line with the tractor tire. You got a center one down here. If you want just a center row furrower. And you got the third one here. So you can either make uh, three rows, 24 inches apart, or two rows about uh, four and a half, five, five feet apart. Um, pretty badass. I'll show you how these click in. I don't have any clevis pins. That's when you just grab yourself a bolt. All you do is put these things in. If you get closer, you don't need to be a mile away. Slide in. Click the depth you want. Okay, these are seed potatoes. What we're gonna do in the garden, we're just doing one row of red, one row of white, and then we're probably gonna do another 20 pounds uh, in a different location. Um, see how they go. So these are seed potatoes. Cut them up. And the smaller ones you leave as is, you wanna try and plant them, uh, leave the eyes up, or the sprouts up. And you want to go about what, 18 inches apart, 20 inches. And the smaller ones, or the larger ones, be cut. You can actually get two seed potatoes out of them, and then you just let them dry a little bit so they cure. But uh, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and fill the ditches, and then uh, we'll backfill with the hiller. Say peace. Peace. And these are all the white seed potatoes. These actually came out of our root cellar. So these are ones that we grew last year and we actually did not consume a lot of the smaller ones. Um, it's kind of cool. So here it is, you know, eight months later from when we harvested and uh, we've actually got about six, eight more trays of these ready to go. Um, pretty awesome. We had to buy the red seed potatoes this year because we didn't do so well on them. But hopefully this will be the last year we have to buy seed potatoes. And uh, from then on we'll be kind of self-sustaining as far as potatoes go. Okay, so these are uh, basically the hilling discs. Uh, they're pretty cool. They come with a wedge clamp, the ones I got at least. Um, I 
think it's off an international in the setup. But an interesting concept. Put the rod up through there, inch and a quarter square bar. And these wedges you put in, and you actually draw them down with this nut, and it cinches everything together. Now we've got the pillar discs adjustable up and down, fully adjustable this way, and there's a little give with the way this set up. As soon as you hit a rock or something, it's going to turn it and not snap something off. Um, I suspect I've got adjustment issues on these because these are Chinese-made garbage, and I think the tolerances are off a little bit. So all I did just for now, it's the only second time I've used it, uh, I just put a little electrical tape on there so I can get a little better grip. got our beds built, our kind of raised beds or hills, whatever you want to call them. Now we're going to go ahead and put Ning in our yellow squash, zucchini, zucchini watermelon, watermelon antelope. antelope, cucumbers. cucumbers. Now typically I think you're supposed to just hill them and have one single hill. I mean I like to do a whole raised hill, a whole raised row. Uh, it's the same purpose. And I usually leave a little divot around them, especially to first couple of weeks just to collect water. It's easier to water them and plus you're going to hold a little bit more water and that'll naturally fill in. But I'm going to go ahead and plant the rest of these. Now everybody's going to hear you have to pee. Oh, shh. 
Salut